then I'm gonna share and we can jump in and bang okay, out perfect. um So just section B, okay. where the hell was that? There we go. So section B. Here too, just cause I'm blind. Yeah, for sure. And actually let me make the video bigger. And I, God, I need to take a day to mess with the stuff I want to mess with. Cause right now is not, <clears throat> not the best time to be doing it but there's always another day though like that's how i always feel like i'm like oh i gotta figure out a background and other stuff and i'm like i'll get to it yeah i i did i messed with my audio a little bit and i didn't even check to see how it sounds and then i wanted to figure some other shit out so we actually have a better looking video of it oh, okay um i'm still figuring out my lighting i feel like my video is still kind of like grainy it definitely uh, does yeah it definitely looks better than okay good last the, time yeah 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 it looks way better um thank you i was on my laptop last time and that shit was old as hell my buddy said I, it looked like i was in a cave and like the fucking with the taliban yeah dude yeah <laughs> Taliban reading Heidegger. Oh yeah, give them time. I uh, I like the face to face part of mm -hmm. of doing the sessions and shit. But as far as like the output side of it, I almost want to do something to make it. I don't know. I I I do want it to just be clean and simple and legible, mm -hmm. but also. I want to somehow subvert that. Like I want to figure out something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like I want to have clear video in, yeah. in the, in the groups like and us? shit, but I, okay. yeah. But I also almost wonder if it would be worth it to have like fucked up video on the, mm -hmm. on what I post. I don't know. And like better, I, like better audio context. and just worse. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, like, or like, yeah, yeah not even have us mm -hmm. present, but then that would be kind of weird because there is, I think you do gain something yeah. from from seeing the face, the faciality. Because they look at us and I feel like they're like, okay, these guys are like actually reading this shit or whatever. Like, you can tell, like, if you're going to connect with like a certain audience or not, I feel like. Yeah, and it's like, oh, they're real people. Exactly. And the facial, yeah, like, I don't, I don't know, man. I also but, want, to burn my computer and go live in the fucking yeah, woods. Oh yeah, same, same. But at the same time, know. though, like I know, like I like reading books and connecting with people too. And like after a while, you start getting even more loopy. So it's like a medium, of some kind. Yep, 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 yep. Well, and that's yeah, man. The CMT shit. Like I, I love the mm -hmm. fact that we have a small, a small cohort mm -hmm. who. Are willing to entertain those those ideas like I, I i think some awesome ideas will come out of that oh i wanted to ask you have you ever read eric from the sane society i was reading like a chapter and i think you would really like it he was talking about he was quoting another book and he was like a social psychologist a socialist and yeah. a sociologist I read Big into existentialism but anyway he was quoting this like commune that was like put together that was with like different socialists and like religious organizations and how they bought like a 250 acres and he was talking about like how they ratified their own like constitution and stuff I mean, going into like what was working with it and people work no more than 10 days a year and like all this shit and like people realize like they could get paid to pursue their education but also like had to give back to the earth and i just was like okay fuck like it has been tried yeah so like, uh, i mean and there are i mean there are ongoing experiments that mm -hmm. 
I don't know, man. I uh, like Chiapas, I think, mm-hmm. is a really cool experiment down in Mexico um, with the. Uh, the fuck, not the Zapatistas. I did. I, I don't know. There's I mean, there's and then what's the other one um, in that was the Kurds? What did they have going on? Um, now I can't even remember the name of the place. It, yeah, in anyway, there's I mean there there have been and still yeah. are some really like interesting Walden experiments. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's what I was thinking of. But the CMT course reminded me of that though, like the cohort, because they were saying they wanted to get like a minimum of like a hundred families and shit. And I know at that point it seems cultish, but it's like having like a group of people who are all like trying well, I to mean... study and other shit. I think, I mean, ultimately, dude, like, whatever the future looks like, I don't think a mass of 8 billion people mm-hmm. should be managed all at once, all together. Like, I mm-hmm. do, I do oh, yeah, think regionality true. is important. I do, I do think there's something to particularities. And I, I mean, Jesus Christ, dude, even something like Dunbar's number, like Dunbar mm-hmm. number. Dunbar size syndicates, like mm-hmm. I don't know, man. No, we're all gonna so. fucking we're yeah, all gonna die. No, that's true. It, it's it's that's all true. fucking. <laughs> well, my buddy told me uh, World War Three is happening, and they're gonna call me back. I'm in the IRR, so I'll miss you guys. Yeah, man. <laughs> they're like, I uh... seven monsters. What happened? Oh, oops. Yeah, yeah. How was this gonna happen? <laughs> yeah. For legal reasons, this is a joke. Yeah. No, I saw uh on reddit in like a ufo sub okay. people were people were claiming that uh irr was getting reactivated mm-hmm. and i was like oh that's interesting and then someone else was like proof and it was just yeah. radio silence yeah. oh so, yeah they got abducted um, that's why yeah <laughs> but i mean we activated irr in like 2009 oh, yeah. anyway yeah. um so it's not like it's unprecedented but it definitely no. is like your ears do perk up like oh yeah and it's it's all it's all moving little pieces on the proverbial board. That's all it yeah. is. Measuring. Yeah. Yep. I'm just like I have no control over it. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, dude. Like they can it is what it in is. The trenches. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, and then write like the book that changes the world, oh, and yeah. then write the book that like totally shits on the first <laughs> book that you wrote. Yeah. That's true polls except i'm not giving my siblings my million dollar inheritance fuck them <laughs> yeah just, just yeah just be like yeah i don't know what happened to it man i don't yeah, know crazy something happened I don't know. Must have got got lost in the mail man and we, oh <laughs> you know what it must have been hackers yeah the hackers got it's it the irr yeah oh, shit all right man jump into right. it okay you want me to start and, or you want to um, start? I'll, I'll start okay. and then we'll we'll bounce. Okay. Section B, chapter five, section B. The everyday being of the there and the falling of Dasein. In going back to the existential structures of the disclosedness of being in the world, our interpretation has, in a way, lost sight of Dasein's everydayness. In our analysis, we must now regain this phenomenal horizon, which was our thematical starting point. The question now arises, what are the existential characteristics of the disclosedness of being in the world, so far as the latter, as something which is every day, maintains itself in the kind of being of the they? Does the they have a state of mind which is specific to it, a special way of understanding, talking, and interpreting? It becomes all the more urgent to answer these questions when we remember that proximally and for the most part, Dasein is absorbed in the they and mastered by it. Is not Dasein as throne being in the world, thrown proximally right into the publicness of the they? And what does this publicness mean other than the specific disclosedness of the they? If understanding must be conceived primarily as Dasein's potentiality for being, then it is from an analysis of the way of understanding and interpreting which belongs to the they that we must gather which possibilities of its being have been disclosed and appropriated by Dasein 
as they. In that case, however, these possibilities themselves make manifest an essential tendency of being, one which belongs to everydayness. And finally, when this tendency has been explicated in an ontologically adequate manner, it must unveil a primordial kind of being of Dasein, in such a way, indeed, that from this kind of being, the phenomenon of thrownness, to which we have called attention, can be exhibited in its existential concreteness. In the first instance, what is required is that the disclosedness of the they, that is, the everyday kind of being of discourse, sight, and interpretation, should be made visible in certain definite phenomena. In relation to these phenomena, it may not be superfluous to remark that our own interpretation is purely ontological in its aims and is far removed from any moralizing critique of everyday Dasein and from the aspirations of a philosophy of culture. I think he's just kind of laying out Work. that the uh, the they and mm -hmm. and how we belong to the they. Mm -hmm. I feel like the the big like heavy hitters of this is a little bit after like curiosity around that part. I had one thing highlighted in mind, and it was just uh, it was near um, it was in the first paragraph. And it was just Dasein is absorbed in the they and it is mastered by it. Is not Dasein as thrown being in the world thrown approximately right into the publicness of the they? And what does this publicness mean other than this specific disclosedness of the they? And I just feel like that's what he's setting out to like yep. talk about. Like we're we're part of the they and we're thrown into it and to like think you're born like a blank slate without any like cultural values and things like that or you're going to like go off into the wilderness and like, it's like, you still know how to do that. Cause like that they told you. Yeah. It's, it's in reference to the, they, mm -hmm. uh, and you can't escape it. It's inescapable. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's, that's all I had so far. Section 35 idle talk. The expression idle talk is not to be used here in a disparaging signification. Terminologically, it signifies a positive phenomenon which constitutes the kind of being of everyday Dasein's understanding and interpreting. For the most part, discourse is expressed by being spoken out and has always been so expressed. It is language. But in that case, understanding and interpretation already lie in what has thus been expressed. In language, as a way things have been expressed or spoken out, there is hidden a way in which the understanding of Dasein has been interpreted. This way of interpreting, this way of interpreting it is no more just present at hand than language. On the contrary, its being is itself of the character of Dasein. Proximally, and with certain limits, Dasein is constantly delivered over to this interpretedness, which controls and distributes the possibilities of average understanding and of the state of mind belonging to it. The way things have been expressed or spoken out is such that in the totality of contexts of signification into which it has been articulated, it preserves an understanding of the disclosed world and therewith, equiprimordially, an understanding of the Dasein with of others and of one's own being in. The understanding which has thus already been deposited in the way things have been expressed pertains just as much to any traditional discoveredness of entities which may have been reached as it does to one's current understanding of being and to whatever possibilities and hori horizons for fresh interpretation and conceptual articulation may be available. But now we must go beyond a bare allusion to the fact that this interpretedness of Dasein and must inquire about the essential kind of being of that discourse which is expressed and which expresses itself. If this cannot be conceived as something present at hand, what is its being? And what does this tell us in principle about Dasein's everyday kind of being? Discourse, discourse which expresses itself is communication. Its tendency of being is aimed at bringing the hearer to participate in disclosed being towards what is talked about in the discourse. In the language which is spoken when one expresses oneself, there lies an average intelligibility. And in accordance with this intelligibility, the discourse which is communicated can be understood to a considerable extent. 
even if the hearer does not bring himself into such a kind of being towards what the discourse is about as to have a primordial understanding of it. We do not so much understand the entities which are talked about. We already are listening only to what is said in the talk as such. What is said in the talk gets understood, but what the talk is about is understood only approximately and superficially. We have the same thing in view because it is in the same averageness that we have a common understanding of what is said. Hearing and understanding have attached themselves beforehand to what is said in the talk as such. The primary relationship of being towards the entity talked about is not imparted by communication, but being with one another takes place in talking with one another and in concern with what is said in the talk. To this being with one another, the fact that talking is going on is a matter of consequence. The being said, the dictum, the pronouncement, all these now stand surety for the genuineness of the discourse and of the understanding which belongs to it and for its appropriateness to the facts. And because this discoursing has lost its primary relationship of being towards the entity talked about or else has never achieved such a relationship, it does not communicate in such a way as to let this entity be appropriated in a primordial manner, but communicates rather by following the route of gossiping and passing the word along. What is said in the talk as such spreads in wider circles and takes on an authoritative character. Things are so because one says so. Idle talk is constituted by just such gossiping and passing the word along, a process by which its initial lack of grounds to stand on. And that's interesting. Groundlessness, yeah. um, Bowdoin Standikite, interesting, but I don't want to derail. Mm -hmm. things, are, things are so because one says so. Idle talk is constituted by just such gossiping and passing the word along, a process by which its initial lack of grounds to stand on becomes aggravated to complete groundlessness. And indeed, this idle talk is not confined to vocal gossip, but even spreads to what we write, where it takes the form of scribbling. In this latter case, the gossip is not based so much upon hearsay. It feeds upon superficial reading. The average understanding of the reader will never be able to decide what has been drawn from primordial sources with a struggle and how much is just gossip. The average understanding, moreover, will not want any such distinction and does not need it because, of course, it understands everything. I like that. Very meta. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the Bowdoin Standikite. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's interesting because that's Heidegger again going back to his um, idea of roots mm -hmm. and that itself isn't necessarily problematic, but his version of roots is necessarily the blood and soil idea. Oh, yeah. Um, like the wall. Yeah. yeah. No, I think so. I think, too, like the main thing I was getting from this is like the normal takeaway a lot of people get from like Heidegger, the clip notes, is just that like it lost its groundlessness and the fact that it's like, oh yeah, they say to do this, or it's just like, oh, I read it online and it's like, where'd you read it? Like who said it? Or it's just like it just becomes like you ever have like your dad tell you something as a kid and you just believe it? There's a Tom Segura joke about that where he told him he thought some celebrity was gay. And then he's like, he has a wife and kids, his friend told him he's like, oh my dad told me that, so I just thought it was true. And then he asked his dad, he's like, oh, I just thought he looked gay. Yeah. It, it kind of reminds me of that. I know he's not saying the exact same thing, but... No, but it it, it is that. Yeah. Um, I think about, in the movie Snatch, mm -hmm. I can't remember which character, I can't remember when the or British where one. or who. Uh, yeah, but there's a scene where he's like, dogs can't look up. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's just like a thing that they... For, for a brief moment of the film, they kind of just accept that as a fact. And it's like, yeah, dogs can't look up. Um, and that was a joke when when I was younger. We That was like an in-joke. Like we would yeah. say, dogs can't look up. And people who, who were in on it would laugh. And people who weren't in on it would either say, fuck you, you're stupid. Or they would be like, really? Holy shit. <laughs> and then we would respond by, yeah, you know, yeah, it's true. Dogs can't look up. What do you mean? I don't know. That's just... That's I've heard like that's what they say. They can't look up. 
That's what they, um, they made a joke about that in uh, Shaun of the Dead. And like the end, the oh, guy's like killing movie. somebody, and then he's like, "Dogs can look up." Yes. <laughs> like that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, I do remember that. That's such. But a we used movie. to make the same joke, and people were just like, "Is this guy fucking retarded?" Or like in Clerks, the the Anne Frank joke. Like I made it like in my unit, <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, like like Anne Frank who was deaf and dumb," and they're like, "What? <laughs> fucking retarded?" And I'm like, "What do you mean?" <laughs> And they like took me serious, and I was like, but, "Oh, yeah, what's no, her name just... though?" Helen Keller was actually like a pretty yeah. base socialist, though. Like, oh yeah, but, yeah. but uh, okay, um, but yeah, it's it's one of those things, um, that when you hold something to be true and you have mm -hmm. no grounds for it, you often will just say, "Yeah, that's what they say," mm -hmm. and that yeah, that's that's the same operation of like of what he's talking about here, the they, mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't, I mean, it's not, it doesn't have to be a bad thing. There is like general cult wisdom yeah. mm -hmm. that is actually good. Mm -hmm. um, like the farmer's almanac. Back in the yeah. Day yeah. Yeah. Um, but it also, when it, uh, when it gets latched onto mm -hmm. and it, and it gets used for, you know, Maybe ill intent or whatever, um, then it becomes not not good, not wholesome. I feel like too today it's like switching to where it's like every single thing now needs to be peer reviewed. And it's like if it's like take Hannah or rent and it's like just be a moral person because when I'm by myself it tells like I feel better when I'm a good person. And it's like where's mm -hmm. your fucking peer reviewed study for that? But yeah, it's like a lot of people today are just like, if it's not peer reviewed or it's not this, I'm not. But if the experts don't say, yeah, and it's like I went to high school with some of these experts or whatever. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, like there's things you, that you just know and you mm -hmm. know you know them, and you don't. You they, they don't need, um, an exhaustive study, mm -hmm. um, and it also kind of goes with, like, I don't know, man, maybe maybe 10 years ago or, or something like that when Nick Bostrom's fucking simulation theory started getting really popular. I don't even think it was 10 years ago, mm -hmm. but recently the, the whole simulation thing like yeah, it's been spread and like okay. everybody the like matrix is out. Together. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like everybody was like either still in whatever religion their parents were or, mm -hmm um they were thinking like oh maybe we are in like a like a computer simulation because we are in a simulation mm -hmm. it's just not what people think of when they when they yeah. say like nick bostrom's idea of the simulation yeah. um but i think that that goes to satisfy this anxiety of groundlessness mm -hmm. um people don't want to cope with the idea that we kind of are in the world and and we are alongside it and mm -hmm. so they create this mythology and since they're like well i'm a rational atheist they're oh, like yeah, well yeah. it has to be computers um because it, it i mean it is a source of anxiety to to think um i don't know what i'm trying to say maybe it'll I think come you're trying to say the fact that it's like you can't like go up like this is the primary cause or like the unmoved mover like certainty yeah, it's yeah, funny because yeah. I saw an article today that was saying that they think the universe is like 26 billion years old now instead of like 13. And two of my friends were like hashing it out. So I just wrote it's turtles all the way down. Yep. Because it's like nobody fucking knows. And it's like they, can, we they never were saying will. one thing for the longest yeah. time. And it's like now they're saying something else. We've come further than like the flatter theory. So like we could discard some shit. But it's like who the fuck knows? Yeah, and what what does that knowledge serve? Like, even if we could know, which we can't, no. But even if we could, what what good would that do us in in our lives, in our world? What good would it do? Mm -hmm. I mean, I I definitely understand. Like, I'm not saying we should stop doing science because no, yeah, I do yeah, understand. Science. Like, it is important. Discovery is important, but you know, scientists can do that. What the fuck does the layperson? Mm -hmm. What good does it do them to to know the the age of the universe? Um, yeah, when they're like, and life I, just left them or something. Yeah. So, okay, good to know. Thanks. 
I don't want to come off as anti-intellectual yeah. either. Because no, I, know, I, think, I think I know. It, yeah, like anti-intellectualism is is right. one of the biggest problems we with our fucking culture today. But also, it does oh, reach a point when it's like, hey, man, there's way more important shit we could be worrying about. Like, mm -hmm. I would love the future utopia where we all had the opportunity to sit and ponder the age of the universe. Yeah. But it's kind of like, you know, we're not free until we're all free. Uh, there's better yeah. shit that that we could be doing with our with our brilliant oh, yeah. minds right now. Absolutely, like if there's people for fucking starving to death, and like there's like socialist pages on Instagram that talk about that, and they're like, we have like how many fucking millions of houses that are like empty, oh, and it's dude, like people yeah. starving and throwing out shit. So you're just saying like, let's address our roots first and then we could all ponder and write poetry yeah. together and eat fish and, naked. Yeah. And I'm not even saying, you know, have those researchers stop doing that research, yeah. let them continue. But when it, when it becomes this thing between you and I, two working class people, mm -hmm. um, it, I care just as much about that as, as I do about, uh, the Alec Baldwin thing, like when he yeah. shot that chick, like, yeah, yeah it sucks or whatever. But also I like it, it became everything anybody ever wanted to talk about. Yep. And it's like, Hey man, you know, um, there's a lot better shit. Sense. We could, it became idle talk yeah. and it, and it does that the age of the universe becomes idle talk. Yeah. No, um, it's true. It's just when anything like, it loses, like he says, that primordialness and to the primary, like, uh, I forget the word he used, the primordialness or primary, not yeah, cause, prim primordialness, um, yeah. Pr well, yeah, there's the primordial Primordial sources and how much is just gossip, because it's like, yeah, at this yeah, point, yeah. it's like, my neighbor could be like, man, scientists are telling me the universe is 20, and I'll be like, yeah, okay, thanks, pal. Yeah. But it's like... At what point is like credentialism? Is I think we're just saying it goes both ways for sure. Is all for sure. That's what I'm getting out of it. And I think that's why a lot of people don't like Heidegger because he's just like we're here first. Like we got to confront like our own existential like prison first before we can. In the sense that it's like we're in our we're beings in the world we have to like comport ourselves and it's like yeah then you're like hey i want to be a scientist or whatever i want to do this because it's available in the discourse yeah um yeah yeah i i, I don't want to do i was going to bring up yeah. something from the last section from oh, part a yeah. of this chapter but mm -hmm. the genuine and the authentic the interplay mm -hmm. with those two um I don't want to derail this, okay. but yeah, I think, yeah. Anyway. All right. You want to grab it from sure. were we at discourse, which belongs um, or the groundlessness, top, uh, the groundlessness. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to try reading off your wrist for now. And then if I have to, I'll switch the groundlessness of idle talk is no obstacle to its becoming public. Instead, it encourages this idle talk is the possibility of understanding everything without previously making the thing one's own. If this were done, idle talk would founder, and it already guards against such a danger. Idle talk is something which anyone can rake up. It not only releases one from the task of genuinely understanding, but develops an undifferentiated kind of intelligibility for which nothing is closed off any longer. Discourse which belongs to the essential state of Dasein's being and has a share in constituting Dasein's disclosedness, has the possibility of becoming idle talk. And when it does so, it serves not so much to keep being in the world open for us in an articulated understanding, as rather to close it off and cover up the entities within the world. To do this, one need not aim to deceive. Idle talk does not have the kind of being which belongs to consciously passing off something as something else. The fact that something has been said groundlessly and then gets passed along and further retelling amounts to preferring the act of disclosing, and there he's bringing up groundlessness again, into an act of closing off. For what is said is always understood proximally as saying something, that is, an uncovering something. 
Thus, by its very nature, idle talk is a closing off, since to go back to the ground of what is talked about is something which it leaves undone. This closing off is aggravated afresh by the fact that an understanding of what is talked about is supposedly reached in idle talk. Because of this idle talk, okay, sorry, I lost my place for a minute. Because of this, idle talk discourages any new inquiry and any disputation, and in a peculiar way suppresses them and holds them back. This way in which things have been interpreted in idle talk has already established itself in Dasein. There are many things with which we first become acquainted in this way, and there is not a little which never gets beyond such an average understanding. This everyday way in which things have been interpreted is one into which Dasein has grown in the first instance, with never a possibility of extrication. In it, out of it, and against it, all genuine understanding, interpreting, and communicating, all rediscovering, and appropriating anew are, perf are performed. In no case is a Dasein untouched and unseduced by this way in which things have been interpreted, set before the open country of a world in itself, so that it just beholds what it encounters. The, do the dominance of the public way in which things have been interpreted has already been decisive, even for the possibilities of having a move. That is for the basic way in which Dasein lets the world matter to it. The they prescribes one state's of mind and determines what and how one sees. I'm just going to pull up my PDF real quick because I'm like squinting and I'm like skipping the spots. Bear with me one second. We're at just to double check idle talk, which closes things off, correct? Yep, Bruce. Okay. Idle talk, which closes things off in the way we have designated, is the kind of being which belongs to Dasein's understanding. When that understanding has been uprooted, but idle talk does not occur as a condition which is present at hand and something present at hand. Idle talk has been uprooted existentially, and this uprooting is constant. Ontologically, this means that when Dasein maintains itself in idle talk, it is as being in the world, cut off from its primary and primordially genuine relationships of being towards the world, towards Dasein and towards its very being. Such a Dasein keeps floating unattached, yet in so doing, it is always alongside the world with others and towards itself. To be uprooted in this manner, is a possibility of being only for an entity whose disclosedness is constituted by discourse as characterized by understanding and states of mind. That is to say, for an entity which disclosedness in such an ontologically constitutive state is its there, its in the world, far from amounting to a not being of Dasein. This uprooting is rather Dasein's most everyday and most stubborn reality. Yet the obviousness and self-assurance of the average ways in which things have been interpreted are such that while the particular Dasein drifts along towards an ever-increasing groundlessness as it floats, the uncanniness of this floating remains hidden from it under their protecting shelter. Did you want me to keep going or did you want to say anything about it? Yeah, I think so for me um the idea of idle talk it, he he's not saying oh this is bad he's just saying this is mm -hmm. um and and this is like this is just a condition this is where we start mm -hmm. our um our our uh position of being mm -hmm. Uh, mastered by the they is a starting point and that's not a good thing that's not a bad thing it's just is our condition and yeah and then from there's is where we kind of go off um uh, and becoming and towards a world and shit like that so mm -hmm. no yeah 
and I think he's just trying to say that, like, or I think it fits into him just trying to say what kind of beings Dazan is. And I notice, like, he keeps this Passover of it. He keeps bringing up, like, the uprootedness. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just, like, we we yearn to belong to the they or to at least have that, like, solid ground to the point where, like, we don't realize that we're walking, like, on thin air. Mm -hmm. Because it's, like, we reify so much into, like, existence. So, like, the bubble's gonna pop, the bubble's gonna pop, borders, like, all these things. Like, they do exist, but they don't. But it's, yeah. like... Yeah, and it's... Yeah. So we are made up of it, mm -hmm. but we also seek it out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's and, a big one. Yeah, the reification. Um, and it's almost like a chicken and egg type deal. Mm -hmm. And it does matter, like you were saying in some instances, because it's like you couldn't go on dates, you couldn't buy pants, you couldn't do certain things if we didn't have like prescriptions to follow, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Like, didn't Dave make up some word in like one of the lectures to like make that point? I forget what it was. Yeah, Mikey's Mikey's word yeah. Zugilu. My, yeah, Mikey. That's what it was. Yeah, um, Zugilu is meaningless mm -hmm. um, because it's meaningless. Whereas, yeah. you know, love is real and um, yeah. and it exists because it's real and it exists. And we, you know, I guess you could problematize it, but also you don't need to problematize it because we both agree on it already. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And there's I definitely more to it than that. Like it's not oh, black yeah. and white at oh, all, yeah, but, no. um, but again, it's a starting point. And without mm -hmm. those, without those shared references and reference, we can do nothing. I'm seeing a lot. I'm not like an expert on him. And I know you're joking about him earlier, but I see a little bit of like Wittgenstein in the Heidegger vice versa. And I know like Dreyfus like is big on that connection or he wasn't his companion at least. But I can just kind of see it because it's like words are those like associations in a way. But I think Heidegger is just adding like they ex and he talks about this later on with curiosity. I'm getting ahead a little bit, but it's just that like you know how before we talked about like turn signals don't mean anything unless it's in like the matrix of driving. And I think he's kind of just hammering that point home this chapter a little bit more. Yeah. Kind of about how like we fit into that with like language. Yeah. Time. Yeah. The our our there mm -hmm. is here. And he's describing our there by talking about, you know, all that surrounds our thereness. Mm -hmm. oh that's true and I, like i forget too honestly like it's not i know this sounds super simple but dasein literally means like being there so it's like he's talking about like what that there is yeah yeah that most people just take for granted like yeah the clinton administration showed us yeah yeah they do away with the second part and they mm -hmm. they focus on the being mm -hmm. but they completely ignore the there they completely ignore ignore the um yeah because there's yeah it, there's just more there's more when you include that uh and it actually opens up and it makes way more sense when you think about mm -hmm. it that way when you force to force yourself to think about it mm -hmm. that way that kind of spatio-temporal element Mm -hmm. Um. yeah he's just kind of like I know he's big on clearing and stuff but I feel like he's just pulling the rug out from philosophy and like us the reader at the same time because it's like if you go into like being in time with like a Kantian like subject object metaphysics and like now I'm kind of like seeing like what Dugan meant in like the trusting Heidegger yeah. just in the sense that it's like I'm still I'm I know it's very early on, but I feel like I'm starting to at least understand some of the where remember like a couple lectures ago, I was like, it seems like he's just all over the place. And I don't know if he's the bumbling professor and Dave's like, no, 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 just wait. Yeah. So that's just where I'm getting at. 
now yeah. as we're tearing with it. But for sure. I think the juicy stuff is coming. I can keep reading if you want. I have the Kindle version pulled up now. Cool. Yeah. All right. Uh 36 Curiosity. In our analysis of understanding and of the disclosedness of the there in general, we have alluded to the lumen natural and designated the disclosedness of being in as Dasein's clearing, in which it first becomes possible to have something like sight. Our conception of sight has been gained by looking at the basic kind of disclosure, which is characteristic of Dasein, namely understanding, in the sense of the genuine appropriation of those entities towards which Dasein can comport itself in accordance with its essential possibilities of being. The basic state of sight shows itself in a peculiar tendency of being which belongs to everydayness. The tendency towards seeing, we designate this tendency by the term curiosity, which characteristically is not confined to seeing, but expresses the tendency towards a particular way of letting the world be encountered by us in our perception. Our aim is to interpret this phenomenon is in principle one which is existential, ontological. We do not restrict ourselves to an orientation towards cognition. I think this may be the first time he brought up the word cognition, too. I could be wrong, but... Hmm. Just yeah, thinking, it might be. It might be. Just because he's been making up as like the existentials and all that, so I just feel like that's kind of like, oh, okay. So he's just saying again, like... I think he... I think he no he he says cogito earlier yeah. when he's but he doesn't actually say cognition itself yeah you might be right just because like he talks about like the existentials and there's an existential ontological one like most yeah. philosophy is like when you're talking about like language and other things it's cognition and like the mental space so I just thought that was interesting how it's more like He's telling us it's what we're investigating. It's curiosity. Like it's these like the existentials within us that are yep. disclosing the world to us. Yeah. Even at an early date, and in Greek philosophy, this was no accident. Cognition was conceived in terms of the desire to see. The treatise, which stands first in the collection of Aristotle's treatises on ontology, begins with the sentence. The care for seeing is essential to man's being. This remark introduces an investigation in which Aristotle seeks to uncover the source of all learned exploration of entities and their being by deriving it from that species of Dasein's being, which we have just mentioned. This Greek interpretation of the existential genesis of science is not accidental. It brings to explicit understanding what has already been sketched out beforehand in the principle of uh, Parmenides. Is that how you say it? Parmenides. Parmenides, thank you. I was like, that did not sound right. <laughs> Being is that which shows itself in the pure perception which belongs to beholding. And only by such seeing does being get discovered. Primordial and genuine truth lies in pure beholding. This sentence has remained the foundation of Western philosophy ever since. The Hegelian dialectic found it in its motivating conception and as possible only on the basis of it. The remarkable priority of seeing was noticed particularly by Augustine in connection with his interpretation of, I don't know how to say that, seeing belongs properly to the eyes. We even use this word seeing for the other senses when we devote them to cognizing. For we do not say, hear how it glows, or smell how it glistens, or taste how it shines, or feel how it flashes. But we say the see, we say that all this is seen. We not only say, see how that shines, when the eyes alone can perceive it, but we even say, see how that sounds? See how that is scented? See how that tastes? See how hard that is? Therefore, the experience of the senses in general is designated as the lust of the eyes. For when the issue is one of knowing something, the other senses, by a certain resemblance, take to themselves the function of seeing, a function in which the eyes have priority. And that was from Augustine's Confessions. 
What is to be said about this tendency just to perceive which existential state of Dasein will become intelligible in the phenomenon of curiosity? Being in the world is approximately absorbed in the world of concern. This concern is guided by a circumspection, which discovers the ready to hand and preserves it as thus discovered. And he just keeps hammering that point home, I feel like. Yeah. Just about concern and how it's our circumspective awareness that is like noticing certain things that's folded in the background. And I don't know if he's just trying to say that like that's what sticks out for our sight is what we see in the sense as the meaning or like the the pragmatic utility of it, maybe. I mean you even that you can't see you're not seeing what's there. You're, you're only mm. seeing what you're concerned about. So it, yeah. like you're, you're already, you're already filtering out mm. um, based on what you're concerned about. Mm. Um, and, and then on top of that, you get another layer of like what you want, what you want to care about. But there, I mean, there's still shit that even like when I'm looking at my wall, mm -hmm. I I can only see what I want to see. And that's not the same as like if I want to look at a specific pair of shoes that's there, but I still see in the periphery, you know, mm -hmm. these other shoes hanging on my wall and the poster and the photograph and shit because I am concerned about those things. But like there's other shit too that I don't see, like, mm -hmm. you know, dust and probably little bugs and shit like that that I'm just like I'm not geared up to see them right now. It It takes an extra step of like mm. – no, I have to look in a different way. And that's when it becomes like the present at hand kind of like I was thinking of maybe like, yeah. let's say your kids knit something and you didn't notice it at first. And then like you're looking and at then, the wall. Wait a minute. That's not yeah. there. And then it becomes suspicious. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. And I think he's just like saying the same thing kind of with like what we notice or like what we talk about and things like that. Like you were saying, like you don't want to talk about fucking out with Baldwin or like yeah. what the universe is. If you're like trying to figure out how to like feed and clothe people, like yeah. it's cool and all let people do it, but you have other priorities. So yeah. I just thought and that was. A... Yeah. 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 For sure. Whenever we have something to contribute or perform, circumspection gives us the route for proceeding with it, the means of carrying it out, the right opportunity, the appropriate moment. Concern may come to rest in the sense of one's interrupting the performance and taking a rest, or it can do so by getting it finished. In rest, concern does not disappear. Circumspection, however, becomes free and is no longer bound to the world of work. When we take a rest, care subsides into circumspection, which has been set free. In the world of work, circumspective discovering as de-severing as the character of its being. When circumspection has been set free, there is no longer anything ready to hand, which we must conserve ourselves with bringing close. But as essentially de-severant, this circumspection provides itself with new possibilities of de-severing. This means that it tends away from what is most closely ready to hand and into a far and alien world. Care becomes concern with the possibilities of seeing the world merely as it looks while one tarries and takes a rest. Dazan seeks what is far away simply in order to bring it close to itself the way it looks. Dazan lets itself be carried along solely by the look of the world and this kind of being. It concerns itself with becoming rid of itself as being in the world and rid of its being alongside that, which in the closest everyday manner is ready to hang. I guess that part is where I was a little bit lost because I don't know if it's his language and is he saying that we don't notice what's ready to hand and all of a sudden we're like, so if I'm thinking about like being called back in the IRR or something or like World War Three, that's becoming desevered in the sense that it's like 
that's what's my primary concern because I want to bring it close to me in what it is. Care mm -hmm. becomes concerned with the possibilities of seeing the world merely as it looks while one tarries and takes a rest. Yeah, that's is it like you're sitting down and you're like problem solving? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, I'll be back in two seconds. Cool. I'm going to hit the head real quick. Good idea. I second that. I shut my window too. I'm not sure how much you were picking up from like outside. I'm still like experimenting with the the mic. I think I heard one, maybe like a truck driving by or something. Oh, okay. Other than it wasn't that, too bad. No, it was. Okay. So this, yeah, this section, circumspection has been set free. There's no longer anything ready to hand which we must concern ourselves with bringing close, but as essentially deseverant, the circumspection provides itself with new possibilities of desevering. This means that it tends away from what is most closely ready to hand and into a far and alien world. Care becomes concerned with the possibilities of seeing the world merely as it looks while one tarries and takes a rest. Dasein seeks what is far away simply in order to bring it close to itself in the way it looks. Dasein lets itself be carried along solely by the looks of the world in this kind of being, it concerns itself with the becoming, with becoming rid of itself as being in the world and rid of its being alongside that which, in the closest everyday manner, is ready to hand. Yeah, man, I don't know. I mean, I thought I had something, but then mm -hmm. this last part, being alongside that which, in the closest everyday manner, is ready to hand, is that like trying to maintain the like self as distinct from the world mm -hmm. um i think too i'm just confused because i have like the blattner on one shoulder 
and then like the Dave, like yeah. Wallen Dugan, because I'm like, it sounds like in some instances when people talk about him in the West, it's like he's bringing about the self and how you need. Like I watched a lecture uh, by that guy who did the self under siege. I forget his name. Big heavy set guy with like a West Texas accent. He's got suspenders on. Yeah, yeah. And he was like talking about like Heidegger's a fascist, so he's careful when he reads them, but he was like, you know, he's talking about you gotta be authentic because you're gonna die and then you have to have this. And I'm like, I see both in this chapter. So I don't know I don't know how to like grapple with the two yet. Or maybe it's just cause like I'm still grappling with it. I feel like Dave's gonna lecture on it. Yeah. And, like say like three things and then it's gonna click. Yeah. Yeah. But it just Definitely. makes me happy that like you're not a hundred percent sold yet either though. So I'm like, okay, it's not just me. Yeah. We stopped at when curiosity has been free, right? Yep, yep. Okay. When curiosity has become free, however, it concerns itself with seeing, not in order to understand what is seen, that is to come into a being towards it, but just in order to see. It seeks novelty, only in order to leap from it anew to another novelty. And this kind of seeing, that which is an issue for care, does not lie in grasping something and being knowingly in the truth, it lies rather in the possibilities of banding itself in the world. Their curiosity is characterized by a specific way of not tarrying alongside what is closest. Consequently, it does not seek the leisure of tarrying observantly, but rather seeks restlessness and the excitement of continual novelty and changing encounter. In not tarrying, curiosity is concerned with the constant possibilities of distraction. Curiosity has nothing to do with observing entities and marveling at them. To be amazed to the point of not understanding is something in which it has no interest. Rather, it concerns itself with the kind of knowing, but just in order to have known. Both this not tearing in the environment with which one concerns oneself and this distraction by new possibilities are constitutive items for curiosity. And upon these is founded the third essential characteristic of this phenomenon, which we call the character of never dwelling anywhere. Curiosity is everywhere and nowhere, this mode of being in the world reveals a new kind of being of everyday Dasein, a kind in which Dasein is constantly uprooting itself. Idle talk controls even the ways in which one may be curious. It says what one must have read and seen. In being everywhere and nowhere, curiosity is delivered over to idle talk. These two everyday modes of being for discourse and sight are not just present at hand, side by side in their tendency to uproot, but either of these ways to be drags the other one with it. Curiosity for which nothing is closed off and idle talk for which there is nothing that is not understood provide themselves. That is the Dasein, which is in this manner with the guarantee of a life which supposedly is genuine lively. But with this supposition, a third phenomenon now shows itself by which the disclosedness of every Dasein is characterized. I feel like this paragraph and the one before it are like the big ones. Yeah, that everybody that's... like thinks of Heidegger with. Yeah, I mean, and they do certainly pack a punch. Um, but yeah. I do think if that's all you're going to take from Heidegger, you're definitely going to miss a lot. Oh, yeah. I think if you allow yourself to get dis distracted by just yeah. these two paragraphs, um, you're missing. You're missing the point. But uh, again, like, yeah, man, these fucking definitely are dense as shit and important. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but like, they're... He, yeah, it's just... That's, that's not all he's saying. Like, this is kind of just him... Um, he's definitely just recapping. Mm -hmm. um 
what he was saying, but I, he's not saying like, yeah, this is how to be authentic and be awesome yeah, the, and do your thing. Like the he's Black saying Earth like thing and uh, yeah. the Kierka guardian, like, which yeah. is easy. Like Dave was telling me not to do, which yeah, I get he's, now. He's saying like, look, this is who we are. This is what we are. This is where we start. Mm -hmm. This is a way to describe our clearing mm -hmm. um, by describing the forest in which our you know beautiful little meadow sits yes um it also you know the the wandering never mm -hmm. dwelling anywhere um yeah i mean i guess you could i mean he definitely took it and ran with it and, mm -hmm. and put put value judgments on it but but it's, it's hard not to not put a value judgment on it but it also mm -hmm. is like it's not a it's not a value judgment thing. He's just saying like this is us, like an existential state, an existential <laughs> state almost of us. Yeah. yeah, not like this is what you need to be. Yeah, like, Kier Kierkegaard in his diary was like, I need to find a truth for which I can live and die, and it's true for him. He's making a value judgment and an existential. Yes. Like in this one, I feel like this is where. Heidegger, the phenomenologist, kind of comes out because he's just and he's it, yeah and he's he yeah yeah dude for sure and but he's doing a phenomenological critique mm -hmm. um and it's it is awesome and then oh, uh, yeah. Hannah Arendt kind of takes this and oh, and yeah. uses it for morality yeah. and for judgments and oh, shit yeah. like that like well, she's definitely better. yeah fucking fuck yeah dude she like fuck took yeah. took what he said. And like, kind of like his biographer was even say that uh, Saperensky, he was like, a rent kind of took him like, and put a little bit like better spin on it as opposed to like the fascist. Well, yeah, I mean, she had her own Heidegger, and mm -hmm. she and she ran with it, and I think through that she was able to do so much awesome shit that oh, yeah. that definitely doesn't get as much play as it should, no. and hopefully we can take Not part sexy. in, yeah. Um, Nazi hopefully we can like anti-fascist. Yeah. Um. I buy a red poster next. Fuck yeah. But yeah, no, I think I think it's very like Western approach because when I was underlying it, it was very easy to fall into like the Blattner and that other guy. Who? What did you say his name was? Roderick. Ro the oh, Rick Roderick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Rick he Roderick. He was saying, Don't talk shit about Roderick, man. No, I that, love that He's my guy. homie. I he's love my that motherfucker. Guy. I love that guy. <laughs> Trust me. I went on a he's... date, and that was the best part of my date was to drive home listening to that. When I get, when I get really, really, really caught up in my feelings, and yeah. like, and there's like a wall I need to break through, I listen mm -hmm. to Rick Roderick. Rick oh. Roderick and and Michael Parenti are my two go to. I haven't listened to that guy yet. I'll have to check him out. Yeah, Michael Parenti. If you're I don't know if, if you're like feeling like a lazy piece of shit, mm -hmm. you can listen to some Michael Parenti and uh, he, he'll get you scientist. motivated. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because he, he did everything. Like... He did everything Noam Chomsky did, except he did it earlier and better Without and cooler. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's funny as to as joke about don't. Chomsky. Yeah, yeah. It's funny to joke about Chomsky. Um, I don't, I don't know. It is what it is. I, yeah. I, I almost named one of my sons Noam. But my oh, wife shit. was like, "No, we're not yeah, naming no. it." Good. But uh, yeah. I mean, I I do love Chomsky. Um, there's a part of me that I'll never be able to stop loving him. No. Like Heidegger but... too, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't mean their um, ideas are shit. Yeah, you know. But Michael Parenti, if you like Noam Chomsky, oh, uh, yeah. my, Michael oh, Parenti is heard the. Of him before. Yeah, he's the better version of Noam Chomsky okay. for sure. Cool. But yeah, um, just... Oops, no, yeah, I was. I was gonna ramble on. Oh no. I was just gonna say the main thing is don't like the easy like fortune cookie of reading of this is it's easy to get caught up alongside like everything else going on, idle talk and gossip and all that and chatter. Yeah. But like he said, curiosity is everywhere and nowhere. It's not mm -hmm. desevering anything, you're not changing anything, and it's like well it you, I mean it is how how we were talking about the the age of the universe mm -hmm. like that's what it is that that curiosity and that idle talk like it it levels everything it flattens everything out 
Yes. Um, because it's like, oh yeah, we we know about this. We can discuss this. Um, but it is, break. yeah. But it is nothing more than just like superficial shiny objects. I was uh, I was in an Indian restaurant with my buddy up in Big Bear, California. It's like a touristy spot where people go skiing. And this guy was, I could tell he was on like a first or second date. And he was talking about neuroplasticity to this like attractive girl. And my buddy yeah. and I were both oh, hammered. Yeah. <laughs> and we were just roasted him the entire time, like to each other. Because <laughs> we're just like, I have a really big penis. I have a really big penis. Yeah. Like, that's all you're saying. Like, that's, but that's what I think Heidegger is saying to it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just dude. Just in a better vernacular. Yes. Because at that point, it's like, you're not trying to fucking, like, share in, like, Socratic wisdom and, like, ponder. Yeah, yeah you're trying to, you're trying to craft yeah. a beautiful fucking uh, yeah. image to yeah. get in that chick's panties. Yeah, and I was just like, okay, pal. I have Good a big luck. penis. That's funny, dude. Yeah. I have a big oh, yeah. penis. We just kept saying, penis. we were drunk. <laughs> we, were the, I, we were both in the Navy at the time, so I'm sure you can imagine. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, do you want to take it for a little bit? You might. Yeah. Section 37, ambiguity. When, in our everyday being with one another, we encounter the sort of thing which is accessible to everyone and about which anyone can say anything, it soon becomes impossible to decide what is disclosed in a genuine understanding and what is not. This ambiguity extends not only to the world, but just as much to being with one another as such, and even to Dasein's being toward itself everything looks as if it were genuinely understood genuinely taken hold of genuinely spoken though at bottom it is not or else it does not look so and yet at bottom it is ambiguity not only affects the way we avail ourselves of what is accessible for our use for use and enjoyment and the way we manage it ambiguity has already established itself in the understanding as a potentiality for being and in the way Dasein projects itself and presents itself with possibilities. Everyone is acquainted with what is up for discussion and what occurs, and everyone discusses it, but everyone also knows already how to talk about what has to happen first, about what is not yet up for discussion but really must be done. Already everyone has surmised and sent it out in advance what others have also surmised and sent it out. This being on the scent is, of course, based upon hearsay, or if anyone is genuinely on the scent of anything, he does not speak about it. And this is the most entangling way in which ambiguity presents Dasein's possibilities so that they will already be stifled in their power. That's a banger fucking paragraph oh, yeah. too. I highlighted that one. Yeah. Because it's like, this one's the big, like, you could write like a sexy substack or a paper on. Yeah. Or I guess, Even so uh, what's that? Or a book. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even supposing that what they have surmised and sent it out should someday be actually translated into deeds, ambiguity has already taken care that interest in what has been realized will promptly die away. Indeed, this interest persists in a kind of curiosity and idle talk only so long as there is a possibility of a non-committal just surmising with someone else, being in on it with someone. When one is... In on the, when one is on the scent, and so long as one is on it, precludes one's allegiance when what has been surmised gets carried out. For in such a case, Dasein is in every case forced back on itself. Idle talk and curiosity lose their power and are already exacting their penalty. When confronted with the carrying through of what they have surmised together, idle talk readily establishes that they could have done that too, for they have indeed surmised it together. In the end, idle talk is even indignant that what it has surmised and constantly demanded now actually happens. In that case, indeed, the opportunity to keep on surmising has been snatched away. But when Dasein goes in for something in the reticence of carrying it through or even gen of genuinely breaking down on it, its time is a different time and, as seen by the public, an essentially slower time than that of idle talk, which lives at a faster rate. Idle talk will thus long since have gone on to something else, which is currently the very newest thing. That which was earlier surmised and has now been carried through has come too late if one looks at that which is newest. 
idle talk and curiosity take care of their ambiguity to ensure that what is genuinely and newly created is out of date as soon as it emerges before the public. Would you say that, um, like now with like Instagram and Twitter and Meta, like, you know, everybody's saying it's like the fault of these things. It just seems like this has been the case for a while. No, dude, just none, yeah. now. none of this shit's new, dude. This shit's yeah. been going on. This shit was going on when we had fucking pigments and cave yeah. walls yeah. to draw on. That's true. Um, it is what it is. I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely and worse. Fun. Yeah. And it it definitely has been accelerating, and it's definitely something that um we shouldn't just be like, yeah, fuck it, you know, I'm gonna eat popcorn and scroll and, and yeah. until I die. But also, yeah. um, when people like do the hysterics and be like, oh, our brains are rotting, it's like, bitch, yeah, our brains have been, been rotting, yeah. <laughs> like, and our our brains will always be a type of rotten. And that's mm -hmm. not a bad thing because the rottenness of my brain allows me to have this social existence. Mm -hmm. um, that's true. Like, I don't want to be an unlanguaged ape living in yeah. the fucking, in a, I, I don't. Like, I like, I like shit. I like food. I like pizza. I like skateboarding. And... Yeah. Um, I, I can't have that without myself. And I'm like, that comes from a, you know, this social getting our mm -hmm. peanut butter in other people's chocolate. Um, I was, I was gonna say, in a way, too, though, like not to bring up the CMT course, but like in a way, yeah, like yeah. it's unavoidable, dude. Is <laughs> the two chairs like can be idle talk, but the idle talk also makes space for like you could talk about the weather, like with a girl mm -hmm. a few times or whatever, like you got to talk to her about that before you're like. You want yeah, to no, it's drinks and whatnot. It's not a so, bad thing. It's yeah. it's not it's not a value judgment. Like idle talk creates the ground upon which mm -hmm. um deeper Solicit things can me. bloom. Exactly. Solicitude. Yeah. Um <laughs> yeah. You're you're getting it, dude. Yeah. I just think that it, I just think it's important to hammer this point home though, because I feel like a lot of the like companion texts is like they're trying to like sell you. Uh, like Heidegger saying, don't be this piece he, of shit. You're going to yeah. die and do this. And it's like, I don't know if that's what he's saying. He's just saying, like, this is one mode uh -huh. of Dasein being that. Yep. Doesn't seem to be the best, but. But it is. It's there. It, it, it is. Yeah. It's it's where we are. Um, And yeah, people do. They do this version of Heidegger that's like the B movie where be yeah. yourself. Yeah. Like, that's all people want to take. Um. And it's like, no, man, be ourselves. Yeah, that's true. I don't know, but man. Yeah. No, I think I think you're right, though. Um, newly created out of as soon as it emerges before the public. Such a new creation can become free in its positive possibilities only if the idle talk which covers it up has become ineffective, and if the common interest has died away. In the ambiguity of the way things have been publicly interpreted, talking about things ahead of the game and making surmises about them, curiously, gets passed off as what is really happening, while taking action and carrying something through gets stamped as something merely subsequent and unimportant. Thus, Dasein's understanding in the they is constantly going wrong in its projects as regards the genuine possibilities of being. Dasein is always ambiguously there, that is to say, in that public disclosedness of being with one another where the loudest idle talk and the most ingenious curiosity keep things moving, where in an everyday manner, everything, and at bottom nothing, is happening. This ambiguity is always tossing to curiosity that which it seeks, and it gives idle talk the semblance of having everything decided in it. But this kind of being of the disclosedness of being in the world dominates also being with one another as such. The other is proximally there in terms of what they have heard about him, what they say in their talk about him, and what they know about him. Into primordial being with one another, idle talk first slips itself in between. Everyone keeps his eye on the other first and next, watching how he will comport himself and what he will say in reply. Being with one another in the they is by no means an indifferent side-by-sideness in which everything has been settled, but rather an intent 
ambiguous watching of one another, a secret and reciprocal listening in under the mask of for one another and against one another is in play. And that, again, like that's like people have this narrative of like crafting yourself mm -hmm. um, in, in opposition to the world around you or, or maybe not opposition to, but um, like, almost like like you're building a sandcastle and and so you're mm -hmm. like like you're building this standalone sandcastle that like you have to protect from the rest of the sand or I don't know but yeah. it like it's it's not it's not that it's not like crafting yourself um in an adversarial mm -hmm. fashion against the rest of the world it really is like through shit like this is how we really start crafting ourselves and we can only do that with others mm -hmm. um that's true like the rent too in a way yeah 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 definitely um yeah and it, and it's like this it's very hegelian it, to me mm -hmm. like i can't help but but see hegel when this section that's um and i was I, curious i love it i was gonna ask you because I, I honestly have not read much hegel yeah so like i know he brought up hegel in the chapter for a second but like I only he's definitely know, like, the cookie cutter aspects. I haven't watched my half hour Hegel yet. Yeah, I would, I would recommend reading it. Yeah. I, I, I'm not going to be the guy that says I understand it and this is what it is. Yeah. Um, but it's when I read this, mm -hmm. it takes me right back to, okay. to to just what I'm thinking when I read Hegel. So okay. take that. With a grain of salt, I'm a fucking moron. No, 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 you're not. Oh. If you're a moron, then I'm a fucking idiot or whatever the what? step the step below or above that is. Yeah, well, we are all fucking moronic, true. moronic yeah. apes. And doesn't Jizik say like Alan Turing was an idiot or whatever in the opening of Less Than Nothing? Like he talks about like morons. Like, yeah, I do think whatnot. Turing was. I do think yeah. Turing was an idiot. Yeah. I but I mean I really like John Searle. Yeah. Um, and I mean, Turing wasn't an idiot. Turing was no. brilliant, but he also was kind of an idiot. Yeah. But and, was, and like, there's like idiots, morons, and some other type of idiot. And he was saying like, we're all the third one if we're not the other one. Exactly. Exactly. And it's true. I, um, I was going to say one other thing that I might be projecting onto this, but he says here into primordial being with one another idle talk first slips itself in between everyone keeps his eye on the other first and next watching how he will comport himself and what he'll say in reply and it's just like that brings me back to like the water cooler conversation leading to like either friendship or like a date or whatever because it's like sometimes before we can like truly like get down to like what we have solicitude for or like for each other we need to have this sort of like banter and like feel each other out yeah if that makes sense yeah i mean there's definitely it's almost like um it's almost like taking the time to craft an image or an imaginary mm -hmm. um narrative of the other person before you like e i mean even when i'm talking to you mm -hmm. i'm not actually talking to you i'm talking to oh, yeah. my imaginary version of you in my head and with my partner i'm not in love with my partner as much as i love her to death yeah i'm in no, love I with the imaginary it. version of her in my head like i like we all do this we create imaginary puppets of other people mm -hmm. um no, and true. so like there's that like you have to take time to learn and observe and craft that coherent other mm -hmm. um but i i also do think he's like he's pointing out the fact that um people take this adversarial view as if we are these well like, okay again i'm definitely um in dave's camp on mm -hmm. on the reading of dasein being yeah. a collectivity not a singularity yeah, he's so this is where i think he's also doing this thing where he's like calling out the adversarial nature of um these empty social bullshit relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what's 
that's what's different. Like that adversarial thing of like, I am me and I'm separate and I am mm -hmm. permanent and unchanging. Um, and I'm self-contained and I'm all within myself. Like the no same castle metaphor you were saying. Yeah. Before. That's what I feel like. That's... Yeah. Um, but that also like disclaimer on that, that's, that's not the, you know, a popular reading of Heidegger. So, mm -hmm. and I think that's just because though, like in order to sell Heidegger to people mm. and he even talks about it, like what was the, like the four conception you have before you read theory. So yep. like, if you read a lot of Hegel before this, you're going to see some Hegel or like, I'll see Heidegger. Definitely, dude. Shit, yeah. It's not there. Or having four conception. Yep. yep. Yeah, definitely. And I dude. think that that's a big problem with it. Why that is so. But I, I think I think Dave's on to something. I still have to listen to the Richard Wolin one you guys were doing. I just want to finish this other biography first. Yeah, yeah. Because it's just, I really don't think you can take Heidegger the man away from, like, his philosophy completely. Because it's like, if he's an individual, he would have been, like, escorting, like, Jews out of, like, fucking, you know? Yeah. And it's just, like, I think he joined the nazi party to like shake things up and he's like maybe this will be the collective and that's why he's like hitler didn't go hard enough like we got to get this philosopher kid. so dude he comes right out in nature history and state i believe oh, really? is the lecture he comes right out and says like it it's necessary to exterminate these jews and it's like Jesus. god damn i can't i can't believe he said it like he he came like, out and said it speak? like holy fuck. yeah they're Part of my he's language. like their extermination is necessary Oh yeah. And it's like, so then he was holy shit. But he was deep in the Rashkolnikov fucking. Yeah, 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 yeah. But again, that's, that's, I don't. I don't want to muddy the waters. Like yeah, if yeah. there is, yeah, if there is anybody coming to this, you know, with virgin ears, yeah. um, I doubt. <laughs> read it for yourself. Yeah. Where you know all oh, the yeah. things. No, that's true. But, um, but that four conception is big though in the West because it's like. Yeah. They first that he denied the existentialist label, but like most existentialists is like I I I like mm -hmm. so I think it's I don't know. The more I'm reading this, it may just be how persuasive Dave was, you are, but I think I think that's a valid interpretation. And I think I, a lot of like professors like have the left to like throw at people. So yeah. it's like Yeah, I don't even little I, I won't even say it's a valid interpretation. I would say it's the correct interpretation. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the thought police. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, the for one another and, and against one another. Um, in this connection, we must notice that ambiguity does not first arise from aiming explicitly at disguise or distortion, and that it is not something which the individual Dasein first conjures up. It is already implied in being with one another as thrown being with one another in a world. Publicly, however, it is quite hidden, and they will always defend themselves against this interpretation of the kind of being which belongs to the way things have been interpreted by the they, lest it should prove correct. It would be a misunderstanding if we were to seek to have the explication of these phenomena confirmed by looking to the they for agreement. Which is why I could say, fuck the them. Yeah. This is how I read Heidegger. Mm -hmm. No, that's true. <laughs> the <laughs> phenomena uh, of idle talk, curiosity, and ambiguity have been set forth in such a manner as to indicate that they are already interconnected in their being. We must now grasp in an existential ontological manner the kind of being which belongs to this interconnection. The basic kind of being which belongs to everydayness is to be understood within the horizon of those structures of Dasein's being which have been hitherto obtained. So again, average everydayness, mm -hmm. he's just telling it like it is. He's, yeah. he's, um, he's describing the clearing mm -hmm. and, and he's not doing the moral judgment like, oh, be, be the best investment banker you can be. Yeah. If that's um, your like yeah additional it, commitment or whatever yeah yeah um and then the falling and thrownness section here is is also oh, yeah. um big for sure 
Um, anything else about ambiguity or? Uh, no, I think we kind of like picked it. And I'll be honest, my first reading, the other portion, I was a little bit tripped up at. But then when we were talking about it, I, it made a lot more sense. So the, cur I, the curiosities or this ambiguity section? The ambiguity section we just read. Yeah. Whereas yeah, like yeah. The yeah. other is possibly there in terms of what they, but then it it clicked with what we were talking about. Yeah. So, so like I already have that ideal of who they are based on what, like, we both think we know who Kim Kardashian is, but if we met mm -hmm. her, it would be different. Yep. And there yep, would be yep. that, like, clearing. Well, that, and also, um, I don't know if Heidegger is saying this, but I, I, I would posit that we can never get to know. Oh, yeah. um, we can never get to know the other. We can only ever get to know our own version of the other in our own, in our, our own private, my own private Kim Kardashian, even if I lived yeah. with her for the oh, next yeah, 30 yeah, years. That's that's um, or my partner, like, I don't know my partner. I know mm -hmm. my imaginary partner. Mm -hmm. And they, I mean, they're pretty fucking pretty parallel Close, yeah but, but uh still that. like you don't know if she murdered somebody when she was like six you know what I mean? it's like i doubt it but like yeah um yeah and it doesn't like, have to be like that extreme cake. you're like what yeah like her her desire her yeah. goal her intent i can mm -hmm. never know that and we could be as honest with each other as we can hope to be mm -hmm. um and that's still an imperfect communication yeah, we're... and that's okay like that's not a morally bad or good thing that's just a a description of the conditions yeah. mm -hmm. value judgment free it just is like if you're like the sky is blue or whatever in a sense like you're just describing like yeah the phenomenological aspect of it i was gonna say too like my friend because like when i was dating for a little bit these girls will drop the like i love you bomb real quick and he always says like she doesn't love you she loves the idea of you and i'm like 100 percent because it's totally true like, Cause it's like okay you like the mask that's put on yeah and it's like even if like you see me without the mask it's like i still don't fucking know myself at times like i'm yeah like, well so. and that's why like yeah like a like a real relationship depends mm -hmm. on like mutual fairness mm -hmm. um and like forthcoming fairness you um can't force it either yeah yeah for sure and I think that's where the breakdown is because it's like when you have like a my boss, my old boss was saying that like her fiance to be doesn't like he, he came into money, I guess. And it's he's like first generation uh, Mexican, like in America. And he's an entrepreneur, but he hates it. And he wants to like open up like a fucking food truck, but his parents like won't let him and all this oh, shit. shit. And it's like, I just feel like if he were to do that, she would just like drop him in a heartbeat because she's trying to like yeah. become like a dean and like a doctor and all this stuff. And I'm just like, damn, son. Yeah. And to me, it's just like that, like, you can love somebody, but it's like, is it unconditional or is it? Right. Just no, the, for sure. Yeah. Like yeah. if my partner murdered a baby, I'd be like, I yeah. can't. I can't stay with you yeah. anymore, dude. Like, That's true. <laughs> what are you doing killing babies? <laughs> Unless it was like some like weird fucking, I don't know, that baby's going to give like all babies baby like there's a... or something. I don't know. Yeah. Like one of those ridiculous <laughs> yeah. thought experiments. Like yeah. if you could save all of humanity yeah. by one baby, yeah. like sure. Okay. In that world. But like in real life, yeah negative bitch. no like just you kill a baby blood. i'm yeah, out no, of five thousand no, yeah. like... i'm with you there <laughs> even by accident yeah sorry i don't want to deal with that <laughs> right oh. all right section 38 falling in throneness idle talk curiosity and ambiguity characterize the way in which in an everyday manner dasein is its there the disclosedness of being in the world as definite existential characteristics, these are not present at hand in Dasein, but help to make up its being. In these, and in the way they are interconnected in their being, there is revealed a basic kind of being which belongs to everydayness. We call this the falling of Dasein. 
This term does not express any negative evaluation, but is used to signify that Dasein is proximally and for the most part alongside the world of its concern. This absorption in has mostly the character of being lost in the publicness of the they. Dasein has, in the first instance, fallen away from itself as an authentic potentiality for being itself and has fallen into the world. Fallenness into the world means an absorption in being with one another insofar as the latter is guided by idle talk, curiosity, and ambiguity. Through the interpretation of falling, what we have called the inauthenticity of Dasein may now be defined more precisely. On no account, however, do the terms inauthentic and non-authentic signify really not, as if, in this mode of being, Dasein were altogether to lose its being. Inauthenticity does not mean anything like being no longer in the world, but amounts rather to a quite distinctive kind of being in the world, the kind which is completely fascinated by the world and by the Dasein with others in, and by the Dasein with of others in the they. Not being itself functions as a positive possibility of that entity which, in its essential concern, is absorbed in a world. This kind of not being has to be conceived as that kind of being which is closest to Dasein and in which Dasein maintains itself for the most part. So neither must we take the fallenness of Dasein as a fall from a purer and higher primal status. Not only do we lack any experience of this ontically, but ontologically we lack any possibilities or clues for interpreting it. In falling, Dasein itself as factical being in the world is something from which it has already fallen away. And it has not fallen into some entity which it comes upon for the first time in the course of its being, or even one which it has not come upon at all. It has fallen into the world, which itself belongs to its being. Falling is a definite existential characteristic of Dasein itself. It makes no assertion about Dasein as something present at hand or about present at hand relations to entities from which in Dasein is descended or with which Dasein has subsequently, subsequently wound up in some sort of commercial, commercial relationship. Commercial relationship. We would also misunderstand the ontological existential structure of falling if we were to ascribe it to the sense of a bad and deplorable ontical property of which perhaps more advanced stages of human culture might be able to rid themselves. Neither in our first allusion to being in the world as Dasein's basic state, nor in our characterization of its constitutive structural items, did we go beyond an analysis of the constitution of this kind of being and take note of its character as a phenomenon. We have indeed described concern and solic solicitude as the possible basic kinds of being in, but we did not discuss the question of the everyday kind of being of these ways in which one may be. We also showed that being in is something quite different from a mere confrontation, whether by way of observation or by way of action. That is, it is not the being present at hand together of a subject and an object. Nevertheless, it must still have seemed that being in the world has the function of a rigid framework within which Dasein's possible ways of comporting itself toward its own world run their course without touching the framework itself as regards its being. But this supposed framework itself helps make up the kind of being which is Dasein's. An existential mode of being in the world is documented in the phenomenon of falling. Idle talk discloses to Dasein a being toward its world, toward others, and toward itself, a being in which these are understood, but in a mode of groundless floating. Curiosity discloses everything and anything, yet in such a way that being in is everywhere and nowhere. Ambiguity hides nothing from Dase Dasein's understanding, but only in order that being in the world should be suppressed in this uprooted everywhere and nowhere. By elucidating ontologically the kind of being belonging to everyday being in the world as it shows through in these phenomena, we first arrive at an existentially adequate determination of Dasein's basic state which is the structure that shows us the movement of falling. Which is the structure that shows us the movement of falling? Idle talk in the way things have been publicly interpreted, which idle talk includes, constitute themselves 
in being with one another. Idle talk is not something present at hand for itself within the world as a product detached from being with one another. And it is just as far from letting itself be volatized to something universal, which, because it belongs essentially to nobody, is really nothing and occurs as real only in the individual Dasein which speaks. Idle talk is the kind of being that belongs to being with one another itself. It does not first arise through certain circumstances which have effects upon Dasein from outside. But of Dasein itself, in idle talk and in the way things have been publicly interpreted, presents to itself the possibility of losing itself in the they and falling into groundlessness, this tells us that Dasein prepares for itself a constant temptation toward falling. Being in the world is in itself tempting. And it, again, that like uh, the reification, mm -hmm. like these, this condition, it's where we are, but it's also something we seek out. Mm -hmm. No, that's true. I was going to say too, he said um, by 177, by elucidating ontologically the kind of being belonging to everyday being in the world, as it shows through in these phenomena, we first arrive at an existentially adequate determination of Dasein's basic state. And that's like literally him telling you once again what we were just saying. Like, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. There's no, this is good, this is bad. It's just neutral. He's literally just like, I'm just describing here, guys. Yeah. And I just, I feel like he's really trying to beat that point in because we've just been brainwashed. Like, I don't know if it's the Dugan book too, because he was saying like Heidegger is like the last philosopher like mm -hmm. Nietzsche was and then he took over from Nietzsche and like is ushering in like true philosophy and like bringing being back to the table but it's like I can kind of like yeah see now like after like really like sitting with it now that so. yeah so have you read history the concept of time no I have it I should it's it's actually I'm glad I read it mm -hmm. before reading Being in Time. Okay. Um, because it gives a lot of preparation for, okay. for kind of going into this. And and it explains Heidegger's situatedness. Mm -hmm. And it kind of like it it just explains a lot of this what Heidegger's crazy. doing and what he's talking about. Um and it gives a why to some of this okay. shit. Like it, it, it explains like he's writing in response to oh, Kant okay, yeah, yeah. and like Descartes, and yeah, like like it, it, it gives a lot of like uh, gives a good foundation. Yeah, since we have so a it's... break coming up in the course while well, Dave's selfishly getting married, just kidding. Um, Fucker. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll probably read that. Yeah, I it's definitely worth reading for sure. I watched like some of Dave and I think it was Nick talking about it and that was pretty interesting, but I watched that like before the course. So I think it's just been pushed like. Yeah. Both. Yeah. It actually, it would definitely be worth going back to those now. Yeah. No, I think so. Um, especially with the break footing. coming up, that would be, yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Uh, you want to, you want to take it for a bit? Sure. Since the way in which things have been publicly interpreted has already become a temptation to itself in this manner, it holds Dasein fast in its fallenness. Idle talk, ambiguity, having seen everything, having understood everything, developed a supposition that Dasein's disclosedness, which is so available and so prevalent, can guarantee to Dasein that all the possibilities of its being will be secure, genuine, and full. Through the self-certainty and decidedness of the they, it can spread abroad, abroad increasingly that there is no need of authentic understanding or the state of mind that goes with it. The supposition of the they that one is leading and sustaining a full and genuine life brings Dasein a tranquility for which everything is in the best of order and all doors are open. Falling being in the world which tempts itself is at the same time tranquilizing. However, this tranquility and in inauthentic being does not seduce one into stagnation and inactivity. 
but drives one into uninhibited hustle, uninhibited hustle. Being fallen into the world does not now somehow come to rest. The temptation, tranquilization, aggravates the falling. But with special regard to the interpretation of Daza, the opinion may now arise that understanding the most alien cultures and synthesizing them with one's own may lead to Dasein's becoming, for the first time, thoroughly and genuinely enlightened about itself. Versatile curiosity, curiosity and restlessly knowing it all masquerade as a universal understanding of Dasein. But at the bottom, it remains indefinite what it really, what is really to be understood. And the question has not even been asked. Nor has it been understood that understanding itself is a potentiality for being which must be made free in its own modes, in one's own own modes. Dasein alone, when Dasein tranquilized and understanding everything, thus compares itself with everything. It drifts along towards an alienation in which its own most potentiality for being is hidden from it. Falling being in the world is not only tempting and tranquilizing, it is at the same time alienating. Yet this alienation cannot mean that Dasein gets tactically torn away from itself. On the contrary, this alienation drives it into a kind of being which borders on the most exaggerated self-dissection, tempting itself with all possibilities of explanation, so that the very characterologies and typologies which it has brought about are themselves already becoming something that cannot be surveyed at a glance. This alienation closes off from Dasein its authenticity and possibility, even if only the possibility of genuine foundering. It does not, however, surrender Dasein to an entity which Dasein itself is not, but forces it into its inauthenticity, into a possible kind of being of itself. The alienation of falling, at once tempting and tranquilizing, leads by its own movement to Dasein's getting entangled in itself. The phenomenon we have pointed out, temptation, tranquilizing, alienation, and self-entangling, entanglement, characterize the specific kind of being which belongs to falling. This movement of Dasein in its own being, we call its downward plunge. Dasein plunges out of itself into itself into the groundlessness and nullity of inauthentic everydayness. But this plunge remains hidden from Dazan by the way things have been publicly interpreted. So much so indeed that it gets inter interpreted as a way of ascending and living concretely. This downward plunge into and within the groundlessness of the inauthentic being of the they has a kind of motion which constantly tears the understanding away from the projection of authentic possibilities and into the tranquilized supposition that it possesses everything or that everything is within its reach. Since the understanding is thus constantly torn away from authenticity and into the they, though always with a sham of authenticity, the movement of falling is characterized by turbulence. Falling is not only existentially determinative for being in the world, at the same time, turbulence makes manifest that the thrownness which can obtrude itself upon Dasein in its state of mind has the character of throwing and of movement. Thrownness is neither a fact that is finished nor a fact that is settled. Dasein's facticity is such that as long as it is what it is, Dasein remains in the throw and is sucked into the turbulence of the vase and authenticity. Thrownness, in which facticity lets itself be seen phenomenally, belongs to Dasein, for which, in its being, the very being is an issue. Dasein exists factically. But now that falling has been exhibited, have we not set forth a phenomenon which speaks directly against the definition we have used in indicating the formal idea of existence? Can Dasein be conceived as an entity? for which in its being, its potentiality for being is an issue? If this entity in its very everydayness has lost itself and in falling lives away from itself, but falling into the world would be phenomenal evidence 
against the existentiality of Dasein. Only if Dasein were regarded as an isolated I or subject as a self point from which it moves away, in that case, the world would be an object. Falling into the world would then have to be reinterpreted ontologically as being present at hand in the manner of an entity within the world. If, however, we keep in mind that Dasein's being is in the state of being in the world, as we have already pointed out, then it becomes manifest that falling as a kind of being of this being in affords us rather the most elemental evidence for Dasein's existentiality. In falling, nothing other than our potentiality for being in the world is the issue. Even if in the mode of inauthenticity, Dasein can fall only because being in the world understandingly with a state of mind is an issue for it. On the other hand, authentic existence is not something which floats above falling everydayness existentially. It is only a modified way in which such everydayness is seized upon. The phenomenon of falling does not give us something like a night view of Dasein, a property which occurs optically and may serve to round out the innocuous aspects of this entity, falling reveals an, an essential ontological structure of Dasein itself. Far from determining its nocturnal side, it constitutes all Dasein's days and their everydayness. It follows that our existential ontological interpretation makes no optical assertion about the corruption of human nature, not because the necessary evidence is lacking, but because the problematic of this interpretation is prior to any assertion about corruption or incorruption. Falling is conceived ontologically as a kind of motion. Optically, we have not decided whether man is drunk with sin and in the status corruptionis, whether he walks in the status intergriatis, or whether he finds himself in an intermediate stage, the status graiate. But in so far as any faith or worldview makes any such assertions, and if it asserts anything about Dasein as being in the world, it must come back to the existential structures that we have set forth, provided that its assertions are to make a claim to conceptual understanding. The leading question of this chapter has been about the being of the there, that's what you were saying earlier. Our theme has been the ontological constitution of the disclosedness, which essentially belongs to Dasein. The being of that disclosedness is constituted by states of mind, understanding, and discourse. Its everyday kind of being is characterized by idle talk, curiosity, and ambiguity. These show us the movement of falling with temptation tranquilizing, alienation, and entanglement, and its essential characteristics. But within this analysis, the whole existential constitution of Dasein has been laid bare in its principal features, and we have obtained the phenomenal ground for a comprehensive interpretation of Dasein's being as care. Um, um, hell yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Definitely packs a punch this chapter. Yeah. I half. I mean, I like this whole chapter. Yeah. Earlier, I actually didn't get around to um posting. Mm -hmm. There was a section that I I texted Dave mm -hmm. and I was like, dude, this like this paragraph is fucking crazy. Well, yeah, I think he was talking about that, but he didn't he didn't tell us which one it was yet. Yeah, well, and it actually, it does have more to do with this section than... Oh, okay. So it's well, and it, it has more to do with this section, and it also has more to do with the conspiracy theory reading of um, yeah. the Dasein as a collectivity rather than a singularity. Oh, I'm down. Um, but it's from... I'm already on the watch list. Yeah. It's from the first, the first part of this chapter. Mm -hmm. And I believe... Um... Oh Jesus! No, I. It is this. Where are you, motherfucker?
No, this isn't it. Just doing this for anticipation. Yeah. <laughs> I really liked the parts about the moods in the last half, in the first half of the chapter as well. Yeah. It's like my favorite aspect of Heidegger, I think, so far. Because I don't think many philosophers talk about that. Sorry, I didn't want to lose track. No. I, I sh if I was going to, I actually should have just got around to posting it. Um, in the forums to share it i will probably do that later okay yeah no worries because i do think it's worth sharing that paragraph but yeah so the 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 different types of fear yeah terror and anxiety and all that mm -hmm. yeah that shit was dope too oh yeah because the usually the people do just the whole like psychological reading of it or like the brain and it was just nice to see it like just in terms of certain uh, ways we comport ourselves because it is true like if you hang out with somebody who's a complete fucking bummer like that usually like affects whatever mood you're in like other things like that and it's like i don't think that's mirror neurons or like happy chemicals i think it's more just moods washing over you yeah and that i mean that again just speaks to the fact that like we are made up of other people we're made up of the world around oh, us yeah. like ju just as much as we are who and what we are mm -hmm. we're also in the world and with the world and alongside the world like and you know if nothing else it's a dialectical relationship mm -hmm. um but I, I yeah i think it's more than that like we are we are our environment mm -hmm. um and our environment is made up of us. And just this idea, this this individualism, this like the the myth of the individual mm -hmm. is like it's so crazy that people think Heidegger is this <laughs> champion of individuality. Tony Robbins. Yeah, dude. Oh, um gosh. and I think. I don't know. See, I don't know what happened first. If like the hippies here in America who like started loving Heidegger. That's what I don't uh, know. Th that guy was saying though, Ravy. He was saying that um there was like a pamphlet that they made, like a cliff notes version of Heidegger that the yeah. Beatniks got. Yep. And like he's like, even some of them probably didn't even read it, but they just kept passing it along and that's how it kinda Yeah. And it, it became rather than actually reading Heidegger and tarrying with it, it became, yeah. well, this is what they say. Yep. Like Heidegger became a they, mm -hmm. um, and it got used to justify this like individual, you know, actualization, individual liberty, individual emancipation, individual assertion, like in the first place, like, yeah, mm -hmm. it's just so, it's so ridiculous that, um, It's just, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. First of all, it's just absurd, like on the surface, that a bunch mm -hmm. of peace loving hippies are celebrating a fucking rampant Nazi. Yeah, fascist. Or a, a rabid fucking Nazi. Like, yeah. But it wasn't, it wasn't public knowledge at the time that That's true. He, he was a rabid Nazi. Like, the public, the, what they said at the time was that mm -hmm. he just did it because he couldn't, Get he couldn't not whatever. do it. Even though, like, Carl Jaspers mm -hmm. um, was around at the same time, and he was resolutely not a fucking Nazi. Like, yeah. he like yeah, he like, got a, he managed to not join the fucking Nazi party and do... Ran or ran flee to America. Like, yeah. Had to, I was going to say... Go he could have got away. If, if, if he really wanted oh, yeah. to, he could have. Oh, yeah. I think, he, like, like you said, it's just when you don't read it, and it's like you've been playing the telephone game for so long. Yeah. You're just like, this doesn't serve my... Because we all do that in a way. 
Like for we sure. have like our little knife of reason as like person calls it. So it's like if you could find something that like it's like the gospels and all that. People have a million different interpretations about them. But it's like it's just wild to see like how far off people got with fighting. It is. It definitely is. And we don't read primary texts anymore. Like in college, like every degree I've gotten, I've not. We have not had to do. I have a philosophy degree, and we didn't read Heidegger once. That's insane to me, but, dude. Yeah, we didn't. We did like there was a course on uh, possible worlds and like modal logic and all this other stuff. And it's like, nope. There's a class on William James, Plato, obviously, but it's just like one of the biggest contenders, and it's just like, meh, it's hard. Well, that and like Hegel too. Like I would imagine, yeah, yeah like no, getting no a philosophy either. degree. Like, you know, read read some Plato, some Aristotle, some of that shit, it and then jump like right a into dumb like school either. It was like a SUNY school in New York. Like it was like hard to get into you had to have like well, a three five yeah i mean and that that just kind of illustrates the point that the education system yeah. isn't actually about oh, education yeah, no. No. and it's probably um, like this is before the black notebooks were out too i think so it's just like maybe i don't think it was a nazi thing though because it wasn't like cancel culture wasn't really in its like thing at that time i'm trying to think like 2014 ish i think is when i graduated so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I just, if you want to learn how to do a job, mm. go get a degree. If you want to yeah. actually learn real shit, yeah. you know, this. getting a degree isn't the best way to go about learning real shit. No, unless like you want to become like a dean of education and like keep on the normal like status quo and that bullshit. But if yeah. you want, like you're saying, like if you want wisdom or you want to like challenge the narratives, like, well, good, yeah, good dude, like hunting. get the late fees of the library yeah. the PDFs now, yeah, honestly, for sure. But yeah, like the the education system is designed for control and vocational preparation. Like it's it's not designed to free people up and give them their you know give them their leisure time mm -hmm. um and people don't want to learn and it's not their fault but they're like i watched the movie the trotsky the other day i don't know if you've seen his canadian movie is that the one with they're on a train no 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 no. this is uh this kid thinks he's trotsky and like it's a comedy and he's like challenging the school principal it's jay barrow show the guy from oh i dude i he's saw a league i saw a preview yeah. for that it's okay. and i i thought it was like some dumbass uh like conservative movie no, making no, fun no, of no, no, no. no okay so it's like he like beats an older girl and he's like your name's alexandra i'm gonna have to marry you and then like his dad owns like a factory and he gets his workers to like protest with him. Like, it's just stupid. It's a comedy. It's yeah. pretty funny. But like, the argument of the movie is like, are school kids bored or apathetic? And the principal is like apathetic. And then they keep fighting. And he's like, no, they're just bored. We have to stimulate them. And it's like, I don't blame kids. I blame yeah, like yeah. the way it's presented, the way it's. Because yeah. students are curious no matter what. We wouldn't be on our phones looking at shit all day or like Yeah. Like yeah, I don't blame people. I don't blame individuals hardly ever. I mean, there are definitely times when people are to blame, but the overwhelming majority of the time it's conditions and environment. Mm -hmm. Um and that's that's why this shit matters. That's why yeah, like reading no, fucking reading these books and having hours and hours and hours where we're sitting, reading, talking. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just like, oh, hey, dude, uh, yeah. I saw this cool thing. And I also, I have, I have a big dick. I have a big dick. I have a big dick. Yeah. But it's just like, that's why it's important to do shit like this. Um, mm -hmm. So we can like help out future generations so they can oh, actually yeah. have 
Star Trek world. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Because it's like my buddy was saying, like you might as well add to the echo chamber if you don't like what's being put out. And it's like even if like some isolated kid or like some trucker or whoever, like the people who will find this, and, like they're the underground and shit, are the people who like it's meant for. And I don't mean that like pretentiously. I just mean like some kid at Berkeley trying to get like a philosophy degree. I'm happy for him, but he's probably not gonna like sit here and argue about the different interpret. He doesn't have time. Yeah. Yeah. Energy. When well, when I fucking when I found Dave on YouTube, um, I was working. I was, uh, my full time day job was I cleaned fucking toilets, mm -hmm. and so I was working like on average ten to twelve hour days. So I would oh, drive shit. a drive a truck around to construction sites, clean out mm -hmm. portable toilets. Oh, okay. And it sucked That's ass. Tough. Um. But I was like, like, I need, I need more. Like I wasn't satisfied with the shit that was already in my algorithm. I wasn't mm -hmm. satisfied. I wasn't even satisfied with like audio books. Yeah, and I would no, go I through, like that. I would go through cycles of like, I couldn't listen to audio books anymore because I felt so isolated. Yeah. No. I'm so I had to like, I had to listen to music. I had to listen to podcasts. I had to try to get some type of like communal um, or collective experience or social experience that I wasn't getting in my truck all day. Mm -hmm. And then at home, eat dinner, take a shower, go to bed. Um, and so I was like searching and like, yeah. yeah, the people who are craving it will search for it. They will seek it out and they will eventually find it. Hopefully mm -hmm. if we keep producing shit. Absolutely. Um, and that's the shit. Yeah. That's what matters. Cause I'm like, you know, like, somebody's willing to take like two hours of their night reread something they've read already and it's like i could have read this again by myself and i'm not gonna have the same experience exactly and yeah like, like i think this week i've been over just this section just part b mm -hmm. of this chapter like four times yeah and it's like i'm doing that because i have the fucking time energy to do yep. it same. but also like with that knowledge of like we're gonna come back to this either in a in a reading session or in on the forums yeah. or even during the lecture, like it's an ongoing thing. I don't just mm -hmm. pick it up and read it and set it aside and let it, you know, disappear. Yeah. Like he was saying, like the whole, like I read being in time. Let me tell everybody and get 50 likes. And it's like, did you read it or are you reading it? Yeah. And it's like, that's, that's what I think is the important thing. Just yeah, actually dude. doing philosophy not everybody else has the time or the energy and it's like that like that moto lecture he posted with uh ian thompson where he was basically like everybody needs a teacher when they have living experiences and stuff like that and when i was grappling with philosophy i didn't have that like besides like the hubert dreyfus podcast and stuff and it's like if we can serve in that capacity to each other and then to mm -hmm. strangers and stuff. That's all that matters. Fuck yeah, I, dude. I don't care if it's fucking 50 million people and monetized and all that. It's like if I have the means, I'll support because I believe in it. Yeah. And it's like that's what we have to do. Yeah. And so it's, I'm a pessimist by nature. So it's just helpful to curb some of that, if you will. Yeah, man. It, I mean, it's like a, it is an escape in a way from that pessimism like i just today i was like legit i almost fucking broke out in tears because i was just mm -hmm. like oh my god dude like i mean i have mood swings and i'm a moody oh, yeah. no, I moody guy but yeah. like i was just on this like on this uh train of thought of like dude we're like fucked it like we're fucked oh, everything yeah. is pointless like it's I nothing matters so like it is what it is um I can't remember what set me off. I think, I think I was thinking about um, art and how, mm -hmm. like, people, pe like, everyone's like in hysterics about, oh, the, the algorithms are coming to replace art or artists or whatever. Oh no, that's what it was. It was the the actor strike, the SAG after strike. Oh, okay, yeah. So a lot of people are really optimistic about it. A lot of people are like, oh, um, this is going to be good because the studios are going to have to pay the actors. And maybe it will be, maybe it won't be, whatever. But either way, people 
are totally unaware of of how like empty and vacuous the current industry is like mm -hmm. and so there are people who are like oh you know i'm really optimistic about this and it'll be good um but the studios are like no fuck them yeah they're showing their true colors like, yeah oh, they'll get kicked out of their apartments fuck them they'll yeah come crawling back um just like but the thing is like we're even if all those people and i do hope that you know the the unions win i hope it's good yeah. i i don't it's want gonna more happen again well it's gonna happen again but also like the the art that's currently being made is that's not true. human art it's algorithmic art that's true. like even it's not to that's different from chat gpt it's not like even remove all like value judgments good bad whatever the current industry is not producing human art it's producing machine art and that to me i don't know how or why it set me off i don't want to take myself no, back to that, that train it, of though. thought yeah, yeah. but i was just like, oh, yeah. I was like dude we're fucked like the robots won nobody it, nobody's even aware of what's going on we're totally you just gotta fucked. be morpheus man you gotta yeah fucking like find your neos because <laughs> yeah, you are like and i mean that's, that's... like I was laying in bed like depressed as fuck today and then like I saw your email I was like talking to a girl for a little bit and then I saw your email and I was like alright fucking hey like let me do something that like fights back kind of yeah like, it's it like... I think it is fighting back like I believe it and it it's it's productive mm -hmm. and it's, it's um sharing resources that we have to share with mm -hmm. other people that don't have it yeah, and like that exactly. fucking feels good oh yeah 100% and like people said too it's like you could look up somebody reading this and not saying a goddamn thing and it's like i'd rather hear like somebody else who's struggling with something or like sincere about it than just be like this is how it is then you look at me and you're like oh i know what he stands for already and it's like no like we're kind yeah, of doing that... the hubert dreyfus thing like hey let's see what this is about uh, yeah as it should as it as it should be there you go as it fucking should be yeah like the the idea that i should Kind of sit down and take someone else's word for it has mm -hmm. always bothered me yeah but i mean there are times when i definitely do like in the lectures yeah i am trying to as much as i can i am trying like, you know, to take dave's not trying to like keep his tenure or he's not trying to exactly like yeah he's on the... his own book of something like dave is fucking sincere and he's yeah, creating we're... shit by the sweat of his brow and living yep. what he like. I was reading the beginning of his uh, waypoint and just hearing like the shit he was dealing with to like get it written. And I was like, I've fucking been there. Yeah, hundred percent. Yep. And it's like oh. I'm like, okay, like he's the real deal. He's not fucking like you could tell talk to him obviously too, but it's just like, yeah, I'd, it's I'd like we're on Dave over fucking. We're on the same campaign. Professors. Yeah. Like it, it feels like we are all marching down the same trail, um, collectively. Yeah, and that's, that's what we need to do. Yeah, fuck yeah, we'll get there. Just the biggest thing is like keeping that little bit of hope. And sometimes you need those moves where you're just like everything fucking sucks, but it's like you're gonna show up in class tomorrow. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. It's like you showed up with this, so it's like just keep that like going. You're just yeah. cursed with the burden of seeing and not just <laughs> accepting. Like, you're like, wait a minute, Soylent Green. I don't yeah. know if I like this. Soylent, Soylent Green. Yeah. It's people. What is, what is, <laughs> why does Soylent Green is people? I think that's the line. Soylent Green good. is people. Yeah, I always get and that then... one confused with the it's to serve man. The Twilight Zone. Oh, when fuck. they leave the book, and it's like, oh, it's yes, like, man, to serve man. So yeah, good. they're yeah. eating him. The cannibals. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, dude, Soylent Green. Soylent Green is people. That's a great movie. I think oh, yeah. that was maybe the first cyberpunk film, mm -hmm. even though it's not cyberpunk. And I've had yeah. many arguments over whether or not it's cyberpunk, but it mm -hmm. totally is cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. Like they just. Yeah, but anyway, that's totally off topic. No, no, we'll save that for the film discussion. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's a good, we should we should suggest that for the film group at some point. That'd be cool. Oh, yeah. I am gonna go fucking eat dinner and. All right, man. 
this was good. Do I shit. appreciate it. Yeah, I'm glad you were fucking still available. Like I, oh, I yeah. saw that no and worries, I was like, oh man. shit, I hope it's yeah, not I was too blowing late. up a little bit. I'm sorry. I get in like excited moods over like the text and shit and I was amped up. Well, I was amped and then last week he was, was sick and everything. got derailed and then this week fucking just got busy and then i got in my oh. head and no, I, yeah. I get it i get it totally man different like yeah. i can my mind version of you gets it obviously but like i know it's different but uh, trust me i've been i was supposed to like like i said i was supposed to go clothes shopping with like a friend of mine and her kids and this was like nope i'm like i can't like pretend to play house today or any of that yep. so you should so invite I'm her over here. to Instead yeah. of Netflix and chill, Amazon yeah. and chill. Yeah, right. That's true. There you go. Through the fucking <laughs> shit. What do you want to buy? <laughs> yeah, dude. Nightmare glasses. Oh. Put them on. It's still the same reality. Dude. But yeah, no. Fuck. No, this was good though. Yeah, man. I'm glad you were there, man. Um, and hopefully next week is next yeah. week is actually super crazy. But at least. I don't. Well, we'll yeah, we we'll, we'll email back and forth. Okay, get at least know, one man. session in next week. Okay, it, I know it's a bigger chapter too. So even if we just do like a portion of it, so it doesn't seem as overwhelming. But I felt like we ran through this pretty quick. Yeah, this was know, maybe that was just me. No, it was super quick. Yeah. But, all right, man. All right, man. I'll, I'll see you in the morning, uh, I'll dude. Check out the upload. Have a good one. Yep. Peace. Okay.